Hey, what's up guys? Got something kind of cool I'd like to share with you today. This is the Heltec Tracker. That's what both of these are. And this is a case that I designed for them because I couldn't really find anything online that I absolutely fell in love with. And I tried to get Random Alley Cat to do this, but... Uh, she didn't seem to be interested in it, so went ahead and did it. Uh, yeah, I really like her designs, by the way. I've, um, actually, this is one of her designs. I use several of them. I also use it on the uh, T-Deck and the Heltec V3, the pager design. So you should definitely check that out. But the reason that I wanted her to make one of these is because I wanted something small and the pager was almost perfect but there's not really anybody in my area that I could chat with over Meshtastic but I've been playing around with the GPS in particular the tracking function um, because I'm gonna have a use for several of these in the future so I ripped off the band-aid and sat down in front of the computer and came up with this. Now here's the very first one. Uh, by the way, uh, these longer antennas, um, I'll leave a link where I got both of them. I don't have a nano VNA, so I haven't tested them with um, an analyzer a tool or anything like that. But this link does not seem to cut it. Uh, they, they came from the same place, but this link seems to be really good. I'll, I'll leave the uh, link where I got both of these below. And one of the, I uh, borrowed one of uh, Ali Cat's ideas about the Baofeng clip on the back. So I incorporated that into my design. And, um, Another thing that I like to play around with in 3D printing is to see if I can get away with where I can just print around it. So the battery and node are printed inside this. So the case is one piece uh, minus the buttons, which are obviously, you know, they have to be free. But that leads it to being a very strong case. And we'll probably get into testing it later on. This video is just kind of introducing you to it. Um, get it out there. Because I figured since I went to... Uh, since I'm going to all this trouble to make several of these for me. I might as well make it available for y'all. Uh, and it's got some other cool things about it. These buttons just happen to be near LEDs. So let me turn this light off your heartbeat button over here it'll uh, flash and then when you go to plug them up you got your red button over there and uh, yeah I got something cool that I haven't designed for this yet because I got a few little tweaks to do the plan is to dig this one back out and I've got a, a couple of these nodes coming uh, but before that I'll have this design totally finished and uh, uh, I've got two nodes coming, and I'm going to offer those up for sale if anybody wants them. And they're in country. Uh, they should be here, I guess, in probably a week. I wanted to touch base on the performance of the GPS in this. I read something where it you know, wasn't really designed for the uh, U.S. GPS system. But, I mean, this thing gets, sorry, uh, a lot of satellites. I've been 
playing around with it compared to the um, the Lilligo T-Beam Supreme. And this one displays way more satellites and it picks them up very quick. So I'm going to turn this one off and we're going to take both of these outside and uh, fire them up and see how quickly they both acquire satellites and how many. So let's go do that. Okay, I'm going to turn on the T-beam first because I don't exactly remember which button turns it on. It would give it a fighting chance. Now, I think that they might have like some kind of, um, it seems to me that the GPS on both of these has some kind of backup, so they might still both be connected. No, this one's not connected, I can tell that. Okay, now I might reset this. Okay, so yeah. We're already connected on this one. See how many satellites. Six satellites on this one. All right, we're connected over here. Only thing I don't like about these um, trackers is the displays on the two that I was sent weren't exactly centered. Let's see five satellites on this one, so we'll uh, keep an eye on that for just a little bit and. Because I don't want these to make me a liar. This one's been getting 20 some satellites, and that one, uh, maybe a maximum of eight. We're standing under a tree here, but it makes it fair for both of Okay, so now we're up to 18 satellites on this one. Let's see. We're still up to six. I don't know if you can see that or not. And what I'm going to be doing later is I've been using this iPad to uh, track this. And with this antenna and this configuration, I can track this over a mile away. And I've got a bunch of tracks that I've rucked around here uh, that I want to show you, but I can't because I would end up doxing myself. So uh, I think next weekend I'm going to go out somewhere and rock and uh, record that with um, the node that I've got up on the top of my house. I'll show you that. It's just a, a whiz block, the 40 something, something, something. The 10 dBi antenna, but yeah, I mean up there that that'll track these things over a mile, and farthest communication I've gotten with it has been two miles. So yeah, I just wanted to basically show you this case and let you know that I'm going to have two of them uh, up for grabs in the near future. It's not going to have exactly this case. Uh, it's going to be like this, but look cleaner. This is PETG. It's harder to print with than PLA, um, carbon fiber PETG. The, what I'm going to be selling will be carbon fiber PLA. That's what I make the, the uh, draw stocks out of. 
So that'll give you an idea what that'll look like. But, um, yeah, that's... I've still got a few things to um, work out internally as far as fitment. And it works as it is, but there's just, just a few little minor things that I need to tweak. And then I'll... Um, yeah, I guess I'll just keep them on hand for anybody who wants them. You know, they're really great for if you don't have anybody else who's into mesh tastic in your area yet. Actually, last night was the first time that I experienced somebody fly over in a plane and connect a whole bunch of us in the southeast. That was kind of fun. You couldn't tell who was talking to who, but I mean, yeah, it was a riot. Uh, there was somebody who popped up uh, 4,000 feet that way, and I chatted with him a little bit. He was on, he had a, little, a couple of Helltech V3s. He never did get any kind of um, antenna with it, uh, his setup. But I picked him up 30 miles away on a mountain, and I responded to him, but I don't think he uh, he could uh, hear me, whatever you want to call it. But I'll just go through my node list on uh, that one on that I keep listening out all the time on this iPad, and you can see if you recognize yourself you guys got to change your names Yeah, that's what I like about the iPad. The app is much more, it's like, um, I put a lot of time into this one, uh, more time than the one for PC <coughs> or Android. I would like for them to spend some more time on Android because that's normally what I'm on. But beggars can't be choosers. So that is the node list that I have compiled, and that's shutting it down a couple of times and uh, clearing everything out. So I think I've got like 150 uh, in there currently. So yeah, it is coming. It's coming everywhere in the U.S. Uh, sooner or later. And I'm going to be making a few more videos on this, like I said. Uh, and keep you up to date with the development of this case. So until then, later.